So I'm a psychologist. Mostly I work at the individual level. That said, Karl Marx was right. <laughs> You know, the objective conditions, the means of production, the larger systems have an enormous impact. And I think about the wide range <clears throat> of good-hearted organizations that encourage individuals to be kinder, more compassionate, more mindful, nicer. Good, 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 good. I look at my country, America, and I've lived through a tremendous surge of humanistic psychology, East-West consciousness, Oprah Winfrey, much more awareness about uh, being kinder and nicer and so forth. And meanwhile, in the last 40 years, we've seen a very sustained effort to develop minority rule in America that's the heart of which are white evangelicals uh, who really, really want to hold on to their position of privilege and advantage and, you know, in a very kind of strange and, and moralistic way that isn't actually very moral. So even though there's been a lot of individual level good-heartedness, at the political level, it's been just squeezed to the sides. Right. And it, so I think we need both. In other words, I think we need individual scale I, I think we should create a pledge, basically, and people have either declared themselves individually for the pledge or not. And the pledge would be simple, it would be secular, it would be something, what are your vows? You know, I vow to hold others in my heart. You know, I vow to be aware of my impact on other people. I vow to uh, have the courage and the wisdom to be sensitive to the suffering of others and move into effective action, building on a lot of the ways you talk about it and think about it. So I think there'd be a place for that kind of a pledge. And you would just sort of find out, is a person committed to that pledge? Doesn't mean you have to be perfect or a saint. It's not religiously saturated. It's independent, it's as secular as you want to make it. But you stand for that. You stand for that. And you can tell quickly who stands with you for that. That would be helpful to have a very clearly stated, what's the pledge? Okay, great. And, you know, modify it or tweak it depending on different cultures and languages. At the more institutional structural level, think of four major issues that all good-hearted organizations have a stake in, but don't act collectively toward. Uh, uh, true democracies promoting true democracy and civic society, civil society, major interest. Without democracy and civil society, no way are we going to have a compassionate world. Second, corruption, addressing corruption. Corruption destroys compassionate worlds. Uh, Anti-corruption, major interest. Car decarbonization, uh, want to have compassion for the next thousand years for the generations to come, you know, quit dumping fossil fuels and other greenhouse gases into the sky. Huge issue. Or fourth, uh, the empowerment and justice for girls and women, in educating them, including in developing countries um, around the world. Major, major, major. Again, with that, you start having the possibility of a compassionate world. Without the full respect and support for girls and women, you don't have a compassionate world. Any one of those would be great for a variety of good-hearted, do-good, or non nonprofit organizations to, to organize resources around and pool resources around, you know, helping there be a sustained change in that particular area over time. That would be great. And without that, though, you know, without democratization, without anti-corruption, without addressing climate change, without honoring and supporting girls and women, it's gonna be really, really hard structurally to have a significant increase in the compassionateness you know, of our world.